Hello, welcome to this webinar about the XPeach model. My name is Robert McCall. In this webinar, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the contents of the XPeach model, a description of all its parts. XPeach consists of four main components a component that deals with the short wave and roller propagation, a component that deals with long waves and currents, a component that deals with sediment transport, and a component that deals with bed updating or the morphodynamic change. All of these components correspond to different modules within the XPeach model. So for instance, we have a wave module that deals with the wave energy balance. We have a flow module that deals with uh, tides and currents and gravity waves. A sediment module that deals with sediment transport and a morphology module that deals with the bed updating. And all these modules communicate with each other during an um, XPeach simulation by exchanging things like the wave forcing, water levels and currents, sediment transport and obviously also the bed level. During this talk I'll be discussing all of these modules briefly um, starting with the wave module. In the wave module we describe the short waves by solving a, a wave action balance. So the wave action is related to the wave energy and the wave amplitude and what the model does is it solves the time and space varying amplitude variation of the, the short waves, so like the envelope of the short waves. This is shown below in the figure a bit where you have the black line representing all the short waves and the red line describing the amplitude variation of the short waves. And this is the red line that we're solving in the XPeach model. To make that a bit more clear, we have an animation here. In the bottom panel, you see the total surface elevation, as you would have uh, measured, maybe, or you see on the beach. And then the top panel is what the uh, XPeach model is solving. So you have a slowly varying um, uh, water level, which includes infragravity waves in the light blue line. And then the dark blue line describes the amplitude variation of the short waves. And the dark blue section is what's solved in the short wave energy balance of XPeach. In the wave module, we solve the short wave action balance given below. The action balance used here is quite similar to that used in the, the HISWA model of Holtz and et al. And it's a relatively simple wave driver, but very useful for the kind of work that we're doing with XSpeech. We'll go through some of the components of the um, short wave action balance. First of all, we have the wave action here defined as A. Uh, which is equal to the wave energy over the radian wave, period, wave frequency, useful for uh, application with wave current interaction. We also have the wave group uh, velocity, which is used to propagate wave energy or wave action in the horizontal x and y directions, and the refraction velocity, uh, c theta, uh, which leads to uh, the change in wave angle. Finally, in the equation, we have uh, dissipation terms that could be due to wave breaking, uh, dW, uh, uh, friction at the bed, dF, and uh, energy loss to vegetation, uh, dV. In the XPeach model, we can give different types of boundary conditions to the wave action balance. Uh, for instance, spectral boundary conditions, such as uh, John Swap type uh, spectral boundary conditions. Or, or other non-spectral boundary conditions such as stationary wave conditions or bichromatic uh, conditions. And uh, here in the, the uh, table you see on the right-hand column uh, the various different keywords that you would apply in XSpeech to uh, force these types of boundary conditions. Apart from the wave action balance, the wave module also solves the roller energy balance, which as you can see from the equation below is quite similar to the wave action balance. The roller energy balance describes the propagation and generation dissipation of roller energy. So you see there's a, a change of roller energy over time, the EDT. There's a propagation of energy in uh, the x and y directions. And then there's, um, as a source term to the uh, roller energy balance, there's the dissipation of waves. And then there's a dissipation of roller energy, the dr, as a, as a sink term. So in summary, in the wave module, what we're solving is a short wave uh, action balance and a roller energy balance model that allows time and spatially varying wave energy to propagate to the model. 
It's also for wave refraction, for shoaling, for braking, and uh, the, the generation and dissipation of roll energy as well. It's a relatively fast um, uh, set of equations that can be solved by XPeach on the time step level, uh, which allows us to have a direct coupling with the flow module, which will be the next in our discussion. And it, uh, it acts as a driver for infragravity waves and sediment transport, which we'll be discussing later on. Uh, we didn't discuss that in, in this presentation, but the module allows wave current interaction uh, for the short waves as well. There are a number of limitations to the set of equations we solve in the wave module. First of all, we don't discretize in frequency space, such as they do do, for instance, in the Swan wave model. Instead, we use one representative frequency or wave period, such as the TM minus 1, comma 0, typically, or in some cases, the peak wave period, to calculate um, parameters such as the group velocity and the near-bed orbital velocity. This does mean that we can't describe a change in the shape of the high-frequency wave spectrum, the short wave spectrum, across the model domain. Secondly, we don't account for wave reflection uh, and wave diffraction uh, at objects or around objects which can be an issue, for instance, on steeper coasts where wave re reflection may occur, or around harbour miles where you might have some wave diffraction. And finally, also very important is that we do not include wind growth in our wave model. So there's no uh, growth of the, the wave height of a distance with wind. With that, I'd like to go on to the next uh, module in XPeach. Now looking at the flow module that solves um, the, the tides, currents, uh, and infragravity waves. Going back to this animation we saw earlier within the bottom panel, that the total water surface elevation and, and in the top panel, the set of motions that XPitch is solving. Then in the short wave module, what XPitch solves is the dark blue in the top panel. And in the flow module, uh, XPeach is solving the light blue in the, in the top panel. So it's that light blue section that we're going to be looking at in the following slides. In the flow module, we use the so-called generalized Lagrangian mean formulations, where we solve for the Lagrangian velocity and use this to derive the Eulerian velocity uh, by including the uh, Stokes velocity. The equations are given below here, and the Superscript L refers to Lagrangian and the E to Eulerian and the S to Stokes, Stokes uh, drift. The main equation we solve in the flow module is the nonlinear shallow water equations. And in the following slides, we'll go through a couple of these terms. First of all, we're solving for momentum in the, um, the U or X direction and the V or Y direction. And at the same time, we're also solving for continuity. All the equations are solved using the Lagrangian velocities, UL and VL. If we look at some of the components of the momentum equations, first we have the local acceleration and advection terms, the du dt and u du dx and v du dy, and, and their v equivalents. Next, we also have the viscosity terms, which account for horizontal turbulence and subgrid eddies. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, we have the bed friction term, uh, where we actually use the Eulerian flow velocities to compute the bed shear stress. Um, and in a similar matter, we can actually count for things like wind stress and vegetation drag. We have the water level gradient, which is an important forcing term. And finally, we have the wave forcing due to radiation stress gradients. And the radiation stress gradients are a function of the wave energy and the roller energy, and they come from the wave module. Uh, and these uh, these terms actually account for uh, wave setup, uh, infragravity wave generation, and nonlinear energy transfer from the short wave groups to the infragravity waves. In XPeach, we can impose different boundary conditions on the flow module, but we would typically use uh, absorbing generating boundary conditions on front and back, so the, the abs 1D, abs 2D, and then uh, the Neumann boundary conditions, or perhaps uh, cyclic or wall boundary conditions on the lateral uh, edges of the model. 
So in summary, in the flow module, we solve the nonlinear shallow water equations that allows us to solve, for instance, the propagation of tides and surge, as well as steady wave-driven currents and setup, but also infragravity waves that are caused by the non-stationary and non-uniform radiation stress gradients. Uh, on the offshore boundary of the model, we have boundary conditions that allow us to uh, impose incoming infragravity waves and allow reflected infragravity waves to leave the model domain. Uh, the whole set of equations is, is described by the generalized Lagrangian uh, mean framework, where we solve the Lagrangian flow and then compute the Eulerian component below the wave trough that we use for the calculation of the bed friction and sediment transport. And we can account for bed roughness and vegetation on, on the flow characteristics. The equations that we use in the flow module do have some limitations. Uh, for a start, uh, the, we do not solve vertical velocities and we have no vertical variation of velocities. It's all a depth average model. Um, secondly, um, the boundary conditions that we use to apply uh, to impose infragravity waves comes at the cost of uh, some limitations of the depth you can start at with the model. And there's less flexibility in applying uh, tidal boundary conditions than in some other models. These limitations are discussed uh, in the XPeach manual and in the a separate presentation. With that, we'll go to the third module of the X speech, the sediment transport module. So now that we know at all the areas in the model what the uh, wave conditions are, so like the wave height, period, and direction, and what the flow conditions are, so velocity and depth, we can compute sediment transport in all locations in the model. We compute sediment transport in two modes, suspended transport and bed load transport. And XPeach has the ability to do this for multiple sediment types. So for instance, different uh, sizes of sediment. Although this is a bit computationally expensive, so we do not do that by default. The XPeach model solves the suspended sediment concentration using a 2DH advection diffusion equation uh, shown above. The equation of various components so it has a, a change of sediment concentration over time here, the advection of sediment uh, in the horizontal direction, uh, and there's a diffusion of sediment in the horizontal as well. And finally, there's a pickup function that describes the difference between the current sediment concentration in the water column and the equilibrium sediment concentration, divided by some kind of um, characteristic time scale. Now you can use different types of equation, sediment transport equations to uh, describe the equilibrium sediment concentration, and then XPeach we typically use the Van Rijn 2008 model for that, or the Salisbury Van Rijn transport model for that. And they are forced using the instantaneous uh, wave and current conditions. In the advection diffusion equation, the advection of sediment uh, is, is computed using the U said and V said velocities, which uh, contain both the, the below trough return flow calculated using the Eulerian velocity from the generalized Lagrangian mean framework, uh, and optionally also uh, extra velocities to account for the skewness and the symmetry of the short waves, which uh, we, we won't go to further during this presentation. Finally, suspended sediment transport in the X and Y direction is computed from the product of the depth, uh, velocity, and sediment concentration, uh, also including uh, diffusion effects. The bed load transport is derived directly from the transport equations, um, so typically Van Rijn 2008 or Solpi Van Rijn equations, and the bed load transport is allowed to adapt instantaneously to the local flow conditions. Uh, the velocity to used to compute the bed load transport also accounts for the seaward return flow, so again the Eulerian uh, velocity and nonlinear uh, wave effects should they be included in the model setup. So in summary, in the sediment transport module, we can compute the suspended and bed load transport. For both model, for both types of transport, we can choose the Van Rijn 2008 or Solsby Van Rijn transport equations, where they are used to directly compute the bed load transport and the equilibrium suspended concentration under the local instantaneous forcing conditions, so wave and flow conditions. For the suspended sediment transport, we use a 2DH advection diffusion equation uh, to compute the time varying concentration in the water column. And then finally, if you're using a, 
uh, model with multiple and sediment fractions, then uh, XPG allows you to compute the sediment transport per fraction and how it moves around on the bed. There are some limitations to the sediment transport equations that we have. Obviously, the largest source of uncertainty is the uh, equilibrium sediment concentration uh, calculations themselves based on the Van Rijn 2008 or solving Van Rijn transport models. Um, furthermore, in XPeach, because it's a 2D uh, depth average wave model uh, and flow model, there's no vertical profile of the sediment concentration. And if using a multiple fractions model, there's no uh, physics included to uh, solve for the interaction between multiple sediments, so hiding and exposure. Now finally we'll move to the fourth module, the morphology module. In the morphology module we compute bed level change by solving the XNet equation uh, given below, where the change in the bed level over time, dzbdt, uh, is defined as a function of uh, the spatial gradients in sediment transport. In XPeach we can apply a morphological acceleration factor to decrease calculation times, here shown as F more. So what that does is it uh, accelerates bed level change relative to the uh, transport gradients. Uh, typically, we would have a morphological acceleration factor in the range of uh, 1 to 10, where 1 would be no acceleration and 10 would be a 10 times acceleration. Um, but whenever using a morphological acceleration factor greater than 1, you have to be careful that uh, that does not lead to unrealistic results. Apart from bed level changes due to sediment transport gradients, XPeach also accounts for dune phase slumping <coughs> using a very parameterized avalanching routine where the model checks to see that uh, critical slopes for dry and wet uh, bed slopes do not exceed a critical value here given the nets m CR. The typical value is typically 1 in 1 for a dry slope and 0 0.15 to 0 0.3 below water. A limitation of course to the avalanche model is that it's relatively uh, parameterized and, and simple but it's definitely not a, a full geotechnical model for, for dune collapse. Uh, another limitation of using the morphodynamic model in combination with the morphological acceleration factor is that it's very difficult to tell in advance um, how far you can push the morphological acceleration before the results begin to diverge significantly from an unaccelerated model. With that, we've finished a brief overview of the four main modules in XBeach, the wave module, flow module, sediment transport module, and the morphology module, and the interaction they have between each other. To recap, finally, XBeach describes time and space varying wave energy by solving a wave action balance that includes refraction and shoaling, as well as wave breaking. Uh, there's a roller energy model that is fed by the wave breaking of the short waves uh, and is used to propagate roller energy towards the coast. Uh, flows and uh, water depths, including infragravity waves and tides and surges, are solved using the depth average nonlinear shallow water equations. And based on the, the wave conditions and the flow conditions, sediment transport relations are used to solve bed load transport and suspended sediment transport uh, via the depth average advection diffusion equation. Um, bed updating is computed using the sediment transport gradients from the sediment transport uh, module, as well as uh, due to avalanching of steep slopes. And finally, the whole XBeach model is driven by boundary conditions that are derived either from measurements or from larger scale surge and spectral wave models.